understand my inside. So if you can now bring me the L shape, so the arms go up the head, exhale, bring the legs back down, to your side. So in and out, extend arms and legs. Exhale. Hold the legs towards you. Keep the head on the floor at this stage. To intensify this, as you exhale, you to pick up the head and move through the legs. It's growing into four. Inhale. It's getting stabbed. Exhale. Coming up, lifting up. If you can, if that's okay on your neck. So we're back up with that movement. Maybe as you exhale, you can just carve the hands behind the head. Inhale into the L shape. Just a little bit more intense. Exhale, curling up. Supporting the head if it's appropriate. Inhale, reaching out. One more time, exhale, curling. You know, I need to make the L shape and just hold the L shape there. Taking the legs as full as you can, to the straight legs. Feeling the back of the legs rounded, the arms extending on the floor. Neck long head on the floor. Breathing there. Noticing this is somewhat engaging core through the atom, somewhat engaging. So, sort of come back to this later on in the sequence today. You can hold it for a little bit longer, still breathing. Stand, semi supine. Stand like a silent. And then we're going to bend up the left leg towards you, interlace the fingers around the back, then left thigh close to the knee. And three or four times, you can extend towards a straight leg. Exhale, release, which is relatively simple. Extend towards a straight leg. It's becoming straight, resisting leg. Inhaling once again, hold the leg there as long as the vertical gently assisting through the arms. You're pushing the leg against the hands and extend your right leg along the floor. Both legs going towards straight, straightening. So you have to intensify when you lift the head, lift the hands towards the shin, uh, back of the car. Breathing now, looking down towards your right foot to extend the, your right leg along the floor. That's okay on your neck. And see so if you can float the right leg off the floor, so the right leg uh, floating off the floor, extending away from you. Breathing there, so you should feel the back of the pelvis, maybe the, the vertebra, the root hit, and uh, extending, sorry, bending your right leg towards you, interlacing your fingers behind the right part. As you extend your inner, you know, for breath, the stage, exhale, bend. Hold your own breath. Next time we inhale, extending back towards straight, holding back to send your left leg along the floor. Head is still on the floor. 
exploring strength in both legs, bringing a little bit of intensity to stretch into the legs and back through the legs. And straight, essentially. Okay, from there, sliding the hands up the back, taking the gaze down towards your left foot. Again, experience that intensification of work to the back of your right leg. So if it feels okay, we can lift the left foot off the floor so it brings a little bit more sense of toning into the body. Breathing now. Taking care with the neck. And okay, like to get out of the strand now. Bring the belt into both legs. Oh, sorry, both feet. They stand again up to the L shape. So we need to strap more for today. The side angle position. So we'll bring the right foot to the floor, taking the strap just into your left hand. Your right hand, like you could bring your right hand to the, the right hip, your right elbow stays on the ground. I should take the left leg out to the side, also take the right leg out to the side to keep the right leg bent. And we're opening across the groins gently here. Breathing, experiencing that stretch of the inner thigh. I'm not going to do a load of work on the hips today. I did want to include a couple of hip movements that we touched last time we met a couple of weeks back, but we're maybe just working through the back of the legs with lengthening the back of the leg, you know, the leg back to the leg. You come back to center, bring your both feet to the L shape. Really clarify both legs straight and back up, grounded. So to change direction. So taking this, uh, bringing the left foot down, right hand supporting. The bell on its own, and then we're going to take the left leg out to the side, the right leg out to the side, and you come into the head bone now. So you may or may not be able to straighten your right thigh, which is fine. Exploring keeping the pelvis level. So, one way of just bringing some more awareness into the pelvic areas is putting the left hand, the left hip, bone on the left, uh, so the pelvic bone. With some weight, it's going to go into the right buttock so you can keep the pelvis level. Extending, exploring, extending through the inner right leg. Swing back up the center, both legs to the L shape. Opening the back, both legs back to the L shape on the floor. Closing the eyes for a moment, centering, simple uh, leg stretch, both legs. So it's the area of the body, as we know, get quite tight quite quickly. It's relatively easy to lengthen out this area with a few stretches, with a little bit of practice. Helps to free up the pelvis, which helps to free up the lower back. Engaging the legs gently towards the strap. And then bending both knees towards you, turn to scalp the strap for a moment. Okay, and then from there, roll to one side. So, like to come towards the back edge of your mat. 
Okay, so I'm hoping you can hear. Okay, so I've got the laptop right next. So the AirPods have completely given up today. So we're into. Can you, is the sound okay, Surya Dashini? Okay. So we're going to come into uh, Charles Bush. We did this uh, moon salutation. So this is something that new for me that came out this year's teacher training. And in response to, uh, well, just in response to what we were doing. So we're going to call this Chandra Namaska. So it's a little bit more gentle, but it's something that I did use a lot in my teaching. And I don't see, I remember even doing it back then. Okay, back in Newcastle. So it's like moving into standing work, but from child's person. So on an inhale, I want you to project your arms forward the long, gently engage your arms and down through the arms and through the fingers and through the thumbs. Inhale once again into all fours. And then we're going to take cat cow for a few cycles, really on your own uh, breath there. Following your own breath, inhaling, remember we're lengthening through the front of the body. Exhale. Drawing in the belly a little bit, opening the back of the body. Exploring the cat cow in your own way, keeping the shins, tops of feet grounded. You can also do this with the toes that come down. Exploring also moving the head. Definitely moving from the breath. Next time we exhale, we're going to drop back just briefly into child's pose, keeping the arms long. Inhale once again. This time, tucking the toes up, that we're going to drop through a point pose in Ujjayada Sound. Exhale, release down. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Keeping the arms active. And long. Okay, we'll do that again. Inhale, forward, forward. And tucking the toes under, coming through. Eight point pose, keeping the elbows tucked in. And then, jumps. Keep a bit of back. We'll go exhale, release down. Or falls. So I'll let you work with that on your own breath. We'll do three or four more cycles through eight point pose. If you want to make that a little bit more intense, you can come back through eight point pose. Work the arms more. So we drop to eight point pose. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you way back to child's pose. This time, drop the arms down by your side. Just come back into stillness. And one more gently uh, warming exercise. We need to bring the backs of the hands into the back of the pelvis, the one hand on top of each other. We're going to come into Vajrasana. So as you inhale, speed the arms. If you can, wide and up. Extending up, looking up. Exhale, sweeping the arms down and back. So we're coming from uh, child's pose up onto the knees. So gently doesn't work the thighs a little bit. It's pretty mild. Exhaling. Swimming, sweeping back. Synchronizing the arms, the upper body, legs. And moving from the breath with the breath. Gentle movements.
and release back into child's pose. Release your arms to them by the side. We are going to start moving up to feet now. So next inhale, take your arms forward, extend. Ground with mm -hmm. the inhale into force. Now tucking the toes up and under and lift up into dog pose. We're going to have a look at this pose a little bit. Different thoughts. So you're pushing back from the palms to the side of the body, sitting bones, descending the heels. Feeling your way into other side of the sun up. Inhale, we need to walk forwards, walking the hands forwards. So walking with the hands. Exhale, releasing into your legs. You can start with the knees slightly bent now, releasing the upper body, a sense of really softening from the pelvis all the way through the upper body, taking the elbows out of the spine. Inhale, picking up the head. Picking up the chest, and picking up the arms. Breathe Taking the feet now a little bit wider than the hips. Feet now reach up, extend up. Well, they're really good at that sense of bending. You can project the knees over the line of the ankles. Coming into the chair shape as much as that is that possible. Bring a sense of extending the arms up, gaze towards the horizon. Move the legs, does engage the thighs more strongly. Okay, from here, exhale, release into the legs, keeping the feet still fairly wide, wider than the Release over the legs, softening the knees. Up on the eyes, let the head back to really allow the upper body to release from the pelvis. I want you to now ground the palms, walk back, taking the feet a little bit wider than the pelvis, just some of the wide start, wide stance, other muka, or birds. Still working with head in line with the upper arm, sense of extending through the sides of the body and extending the heels down. Just it's interesting to keep the heels slightly off the floor. We can work at paying down through that space, the heels moving down. Those grounded, inhaling or force. Exhale, child pose like a pause there, you can release the out. Releasing the out completely, either rest to your thighs or resting forwards. Do rest the arms. So we're moving through that sequence, but each time and I'm playing with the distance between the feet. So we've got almost feet wide. So we're now going to go with the hip width. So inhale, take your arm forwards, rounding the palms and forwards. Uh, tucking the toes under, lifting the palms. So now the, the feet more or less in line with the hips. Length the neck through the side body, length the others. In a walk, the feet towards hip width now. Okay, so just being aware of the distance between the feet and releasing over the legs. Exploring uh, straightening the legs. Upper body releasing. Really letting go through the upper body. One of the qualities of forward bands, which in a way we end up working with two leg stretches, so we can end up working with a sense of quietness. So we, this is really obvious in the seated floor, so not just standing floor. So from here, inhale, lifting the head, lifting the chest, the arms to last, back into the 
really aware of the underlying plan underneath the hips. Extend the arms up. And from the Greek, it does again track the knees and foot. Put the ankle so and our knees here with the palm, knees and foot apart, extending through Munkapasa. Chair books, feet grounded. And then to the side body, the hips. Breathe uh, exhale, release the arms again towards the legs, Uttanasana. Looking into the leg, exploring and straightening the legs. Elbows wiggling out. Sitting the head. Round of arms. Walk back, feet head foot, double toes. Also noticing if you've got a tendency, like I'm just noticing my tendency with dog pose is always to take the feet wide. So this feels even just with the feet in line with the hips, it feels quite narrow. Stand up. Down, heels down into space. Long through the upper body and all four. You can pause into child's pose. Completely release the arms. Raise the head. Let it go. Connecting with the breath. Inhale. Or force. We're going to bring the inner feet together, as in the big toes together, double toes with big toes together. This is going to feel a bit weird for sure. So I just want to explore working the legs again, but this time feet together. So we'll explore that in the three poses double toes, Ujjkatasana. Chambers and Uttanasana, forward fold first. So inhale, walking your feet forward. Bring the feet together, okay, in the forward position. Bring the feet together, broadening across the feet, releasing into the legs, exploring, straightening the legs. We're going to insist on that. Okay, so to get the legs onto a straight, we're pushing down through the feet, lifting the feet down. Releasing the upper body, so not forcing the upper body. On an inhale, lifting the head, lifting the chest, lifting up the arms. Pass on the feet together. Bringing us up on the thin line, which is the medial line, sort of gathering into the center of it. As much in the legs. You can extend the arms up. Then the guts. We're going to keep the legs together, the okay, knees together. That's the part that's like the easiest of the three. Okay, so tracking the knees. Sounds of gently bringing the inner legs together. In the knees. Explore the chair pose gaze. It's a powerful pose. Extending through the arms. And when you're ready, just explore going a little bit lower. Does that feel like? You're releasing that. Into Uttanasana. Still the inner legs together. Releasing the head back. Arms releasing, elbows wide. Keeping the feet together. We're going to walk back now. 
Dope hurts. Once again, big toes together. Pushing through the hands, through the sides of the body. Inhale, all fours and rest for a moment. In the child's pose. Completely release the arms. Missing the hands, letting go. Taking the hands. You can feel the whole body, the whole body. Explore the uh, experience in the whole body from the hands to the feet to the arms to the legs. Inhaling mm -hmm. into force. So keeping the feet together and the legs together, going to work a little bit more intensely just into one leg. So not the that for ages, but I'll skip about this this morning. Yeah, so this is uh feet together. Inevitably one of the leg lift there is gonna lift the hip. You can enter prayer. I was more or less level. I just feel how that intensifies the stretch down through the ground and foot. Maybe you find the heel slightly towards the floor. Okay, from that end, inhaling or force, just briefly. Child's pose, long arms, keep the arms active. We'll go once again into a force back up. Dog pose, we'll switch sides. So big toes together. Projecting through the other leg. Exploring the leg stretch as much in the down leg as the upper leg. Head in line with the upper arm. I'm going to take this movement into. The warrior is quite So we're certainly keeping the power level. Uh, as much as you can feel that when you're ready, inhaling. All fours once again, breast down into the child's pose. Let go. Just letting go then. Let go of the arms. So we did this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, dog pose. So now separating your feet about hip width. Okay, we're gonna step the right foot well forward. So okay, and bring the left foot in a bit. And I'm gonna walk my hands a little bit forward. So I am on my fingertips here. You could come on bricks, but uh, let's just go with it with our equipment to lift the back leg, lift the chest. I'm just touching with your very lightly with the fingertips. So all the work is going into the standing leg, pelvis is level. If you've got that, you can lift the torso a little bit higher and take the arms straight back. Breathing there. If you've got that, you can extend the arms forwards, which is more intense again. Breathing there, or just bring the fingertips to the floor. Not an easy pose. Strong on the standing leg, a band, standing leg, and the to the floor. Touch down with the left foot, then I'm back to dog pose. Lengthening through the sides of the body. Exhale, release down once again. Turn to pose. 
Pause, pause, again on the inhale, dog pose, stepping the left foot forwards this time, so it's quite a long step forwards, and then we bring the right foot in a little bit, bring yourself up onto the fingers, floating the back leg up your right leg, purpose level, and you explore coming more onto just the tips of the fingers. So that would be like uh, stage two, stage one, fingertips down, stage two is to put the fingers. If you got that, you can lift away from the floor, lifting the arms. Like a stage three, stage four, we'll be taking the arms forwards, breathing that back leg, engaging it, standing leg firm. Not even pose when you're ready. Dropping back to the floor. Fingers it first. Bending left leg, right leg down, and release that dog pose. This time with the toes pose straight, your arms through the legs. This bring helps bring awareness into the upper body. Feeling that stretch over the tops of the shoulders, outer arms. So from here, I want us to do one more standing. Uh, again, but we've done loads of pressure, so it should come out fairly uh, accessible. So coming to all fours, coming into dog posts. Got a fantastic name in the light on yoga. Uh, which, uh, yeah, I forgot that. Okay, I've got it written down now. Okay, bring the feet forward. So bring the feet together, bring the legs together, and you're releasing, releasing forward and turn that side. And then coming up, deep dealing. Sorry, no, no. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Okay, so we're going to slide the right foot back a little distance. Okay. So it's. Uh, Oh, I can't remember the name of that. Okay, so you're going to keep uh, the standing leg as straight as possible, swinging in for the standing leg and swinging up the right leg. So it's like a kind of upside down split, if you like. I'm bringing my right hand into the calf. Urdhva Mukaika Akipara Sana. I think it's called Urdhva Mukaika. So it's like uh, face down. Urdhva Mukaika. Ekipara, is one leg. But I wish that's so nice, making the leg stretch. So it's intensifying the leg, lifting up, lifting up, swinging into the right, left leg, and then swing down. Okay, feet back together. Bring a pause there in Utanasana. Letting the body release down, just be quiet with the spine, the neck. So slide the left foot back a little bit. My I'm sliding it probably a meter back. The weight is dropping through the right foot. And then I'm lifting. Lifting the left leg up as high as it'll go. Bringing my left hand behind the right car. Explore it. Lifting my left leg. Urban Kanka, Akiparasta. That's how it goes. Breathing more. Okay. 
and exploring straight in the right leg. We're going to release them down. And we'll feet together, ground the palms, walk back. Separating the feet now, dog pose. Inhale all fours and once again. Exhale, thread the arms through the legs. That's comfortable for you. Coming up to Balasana, Child's Pose. I just wanted to put in a pose now, which is a bit more restful. So it will be helpful to come back to a wall. And if you can have two foam bricks, so we'll be helpful to have a little bit of support and one ball brick. So we're going to do a pose which is um, bringing the spine completely into the wall. And I've got a core brick. So what I want to do when I come into this pose, so you could be in like, as it were, crouch position, and I'm going to move your sacrum right into the wall. Okay. So I'm, I'm bringing the sacrum closer to the wall. And I want to bring the brick, a more solid brick between the feet. And then I just line up against the wall there. Resting, yeah, if you, the idea is to get yourself as close to the wall as possible to get the, this sort of uh, desired effect. The desired effect is a sense of expansion across the back of the pelvis as well as the front of the pelvis, so across the groin, but also across the sacral, sacroiliac area. And then it also brings in a sense of alignment. So you want to set it up. You can just close your eyes as close to the wall as possible. So, and release the arms, sense of relaxing the arms, releasing the arms. So, yeah, I've done this quite a bit in these classes. I know this is like one of my favorite pause poses. So it can be also bring awareness into um, the outer edge of the foot. The outer edge of the foot is, is pressing into the middle toe the side. That also means towards each other. So this will lead a little bit into what we're going to do next. I'm bringing it just as a forward pose. Standings, more work. Connecting with breath, connecting with the sensations, and in the legs again. The sense of the face, relax, fix the jaw, softening. Feeling the coolness of the wall, hardness. Is, is there to give the sense of alignment? Support. Okay, so from there, 
you're going to bring the leg, bring the legs back together. This might help you teach the hands to do that. Then I want this to, so I'm going to do this sideways. I want this to come onto our mats. Okay, so we're going to bring, uh, so yeah, and we were doing this with Sabatur, she on the teacher training. So we're going to bring the right leg folded into itself. And then the, the left leg we're bringing in. So just to say that I don't, I don't think it particularly helps sitting on a brick doing this. If you were teaching it to beginners, I guess you could give us, have on one brick, just to have a bit more sense of mind. But it might be less stable. So I'm, I'm just going to try this out. So I've got one brick there. So I want this to then bend up. So what I'm going to be taking is taking my right hand across the foot and my left hand is taking the inner foot and I'm floating up. So I've got my right hand across the top, left hand underneath. And I'm floating up my thumb towards the belly. And I want to be about lengthening up here. Okay, so this is really easy. So when I first learned this years ago, this, this came from my teacher in a beat that I got golf free teacher at the Deborah. So but if you emphasize straining the leg too much, you can end up really overworking up the spine. So really easy to find out. Then we through the upper body. And also the upper body I say from the sitting bones all the way up before we strain the legs, so we start straightening the leg from you. So it may or may not go to straight. But having the sense of really stable ball and stable stream your mind which would be thoracic or a dropping the shoulder blades. This becomes a little sequence and you explore taking the leg straight. Okay, so just be careful about collapsing in the lumbar area. So take hold now the foot just with the left hand. The right hand comes down by the side, and then I'm going to open the left leg. So I'm going to change direction. I'm going to open the left leg to the left. Okay, so again, exploring, straightening the leg or not. This is going to make a difference which part of the foot you hold. If you want more of a challenge, take hold of the heel of the foot. If you want a little bit more Accessible, accessible the pose, take on the foot. Inhale back to center, recross right hand over the top. And then we're going to take the, the foot now to, or the leg, across the body. Okay. So again, extend it down through. So yeah, we're working a little bit the outer leg now to, to work into that. Again, thinking about the upper body being long, being tall. Swing back to centre, both arms, re-clarify lengthening. So this is really going to engage more like the core of the body. So I wanted to see if you can keep the leg up, standing, and then extend the arms alongside your leg. I'm just going to change my angle again. Direct direction which down long extending the arms. You want to again take hold of both, uh, take hold of the foot now with both the side of the foot. So this is called crab chest and the, the full point is you take the leg out and you bring your head. So let's just explore that. So you take the leg higher. You allow the upper body to close towards the leg, right? Which is the cranium. Really, as you're bringing the elbows, really aware of what's happening in the lumbar area, so sort of lifting out of the pelvis and release down. Okay, so let's switch sides. Left leg down. So now my left hand comes to the top right. Loading the leg up. Exploring, lifting the spine. Forward to the back, straight knee. 
there must be quite some British literature in science. Exploring straightening the bed. So without collapsing or stressing the lumbar area. The human crown up. You can even just to help with the sense of lifting through the spine, you can sort of gaze up, you can look up. You can hold up the foot just with the right of the Take the right of the leg out to the side, left hand can be down to the floor. Four. Exploring up the front. In now at the center, crossing the back hand up at the top, across the foot, taking the leg into your left, right leg to the left, right hand to the ground, do think about lifting through the spine to so release the growing spine with the wall. Gazing slightly up and you can take it to the right now. So we then bring the leg back to centre. So an easier version of this would be to bend the leg and extend the arms. If that's okay, think about straightening the leg. So also, yeah, that's really the two options for the bent leg or the straight leg. So from the taking hold of the foot now with both hands either side of the foot, okay, on the version or hold of the foot, and extend the leg up and allow the upper body to bow towards your leg. Grab chest Anna. Breathing there. Not forcing the body, just exploring possibilities. Taking the elbows out like two wings. Sense of resting the head for the moment. And then we stand. Okay. So carefully, we're going to come around and over the feet. Pause. Open the backs of the legs into dog pose. Grounding the palms, lengthening through each side of the body. So it'd be logical to put in a uh, sitting forward bend, but I'm just going to do one, right? So you could do a whole sequence of sitting forward bends if you wanted to carry on working with this idea of leg stretch work. We're just going to come into the classic one. So I want you to come down what for? It's going to change direction. Bring the feet out in front of you, legs out in front of you. You could sit up on a brick. So we were exploring this on the teacher training. And we want to make this really easy for you. Have some support under the back of the legs. So I'm going to have a bolster at hand. Let's just try without any support to begin with. So the legs extending out in front. Try and you want to bring that. This is classic adjustment of bringing the buttock flesh back. Extend the arms up, extending down the legs. So we've really worked into the back of the legs this session. So release forwards over your over the tops of the legs of the pelvis. Release forwards. Let's see how you come into this pose. Not an easy pose for a lot of people. What's important is to, as a sense of releasing. So with the bolster, you're coming forwards fairly, fairly well. You could support the head on the bolster, maybe some blocks. So it gives a sense of being able to release the upper body. So the upper body is not just hanging in space. Would be one option. And what we were exploring on the teacher training was taking a bolster behind the legs. Okay, so that would be this is a really mild pose, but it's useful in terms of uh, giving your students a chance just to rest in a forward fold. It's not really working in the legs, to be honest. It's more of a, a gentle forward fold. 
So from a point of view of working the legs, it's pretty marginal, okay? But this is another option for Pashimottanasana. So that uh, your students can feel like they're at least coming forwards, okay? I'm just gonna adjust that on that. So doing more of a leg stretch. With the forward thoughts, remembering that we don't want to be pulling aggressively with the arms because you can end up just straining the spine, particularly. Moving the legs gently. So we're going to hold this a little bit longer, this pose, as she moves. See if you can let the upper body rest. Taking one of those three options, why the third support? Or support like I'm doing now, just on the top of the legs to support the head. Or one of the versions of the legs. Which takes out the leg work, get us off. Breath. Let's just take another 10 breaths, okay? So just extend the here. For another 10 breaths. And then we're ready, you know, just carefully come up, loading up. Okay, so I'd like us to see there's a lot of forward bending. Okay, so we're gonna got two options. You can use the core brick if that's what you've got handy, or if that's what you prefer, or we're gonna do a supported bridge. You could also use the foam bricks. Okay, so I'll just show you with the foam bricks if you want four. Going to use the cork brick, but as we know, with the so we're going to come into a supported bridge. Okay, so, bricks, okay. so you would be flying by the feet if it makes sense. And the cork brick there. Okay, and it's coming to just spinning it for a while, resting. Sense of the lower back extending out. So, uh, the more forward folding, what we do that, pressing the anterior face, first from the to extend, sort of open the anterior face. So, not, yeah, that's not just the bones, but it's all the kind of things. So, uh, from the bones, and being compressed. Condense and open again. Bit more of a break. We're going to take like ten breaths here to the bridge. Twenty breaths. So in any motion, so it's a length of the vertical. <laughs> the back extending through the legs.
Okay, ah, oh, good. Okay, so if you want to do one more thing there, like a twist, let's do that. So so I'm going to do one uh, supine twist here. So one example, if you wanted to go with the leg extension, is to extend uh, take both legs to the side, extend the top leg along the floor. It's a variation of twist. So you're turning to one side, but the top leg extended. But we're fairly passive now. In this last pose, penultimate pose. Opening the outer edge of the leg. And a few breaths here, remember to both shoulders down, the gaze in the opposite direction of the legs.
switch sound. So, both legs going to one side, extend the top leg. Both shoulders down. To set up now into Shavasana. So make sure you're going to be warm enough. You can use the bolster to support your. Um, so I'm just going to lead this in, Rebecca. That's okay. Let's unplug these. Hopefully, the sound is okay. So you can have a little bit of support for the back of the head. And some support for the back of the knees. Remember, we've got these three adjustments on the spine. So it's a sense of broadening the upper back, lengthening the waist, lengthening the neck, lengthening the neck, broadening, and lengthening the waist area. And we rest down into Shavasana. So we're going to move into, uh, I'll lead this session. For the last few minutes of the class. Once again, feeling the surface of the floor, sense of hardness, support. Becoming aware of where you've worked in the body to the back of the legs. Probably through the lower spine, back of the body. So it comes to a lot of forward folding as well as leg stretches. Forward folds, leg stretches, really working the back of the body. I like to release the legs, the surrounding legs, the arms, the surrounding the arms, the sense of the arms and legs release to the floor, away from the body, the sense of space in the shoulder joint, in the joint.
it's difficult to wear the body parts from the top of the head to the fingertips, to the soles of the feet. This is the whole body. One of the objectives of yoga practice in terms of linear yoga function is for you to keep yoga together, bringing together. In a sense, we're looking out for this possibility of bringing the whole body together since almost only the mind. Things to ask is that just an idea, it's an experience. Let's become aware of the breath. You can just let the breath be free. And just see where the breath is in the belly. Whether it's in the belly or in the middle of the body or the chest. Where is the breath? The belly, the middle of the body, chest. And when I seem to what we call the heart, mind, to the sense of the emotions. So noticing your moods, whether it's expansive or contractive. It's calm or agitated. And then finally, be aware of the sense of change or quality of transformation from stand, standard changing, transforming experience of fixed. See so if we can find that like, sense of calmness within that sense of change of fluidity. In a way, experience is constantly changing, flowing, fluid. Once again, expanding your awareness into the whole of the body, and then expanding your awareness into the space around you, the room around you. Too.
for the good of me. It's the body of feel free to carry on a bit longer. Carefully move to one side. Coming out of this. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks very much.